Hey, Railbirds, Kevin here. All right, we have more nine ball action for you from the 2023 Derby City Classic. This is a round six match. Neither player has a loss. On the left, Jeffrey the Bull de Luna from the Philippines. On the right, P.S. Labudis from Lithuania. This is going to be a good match. Oh, look at this lag. If the match is anything like this lag, it's going to be a close one. All right, I am being joined by Mark White. Thanks for joining us, Mark. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me once again. And uh, I'm beginning to wonder about you a little bit. I think you've got a little bit of a thing for Pierce Labutis. I mean, this is about the fourth time we've had him on the stream. I think I, you like his game. I, I do <laughs> like his game, but I think Pierce has a thing for us. He keeps seeking out our streaming table, I think is what it is. I think he's, uh, yeah. I think he's uh, slipping the tournament director some uh, $20 bill. Say, hey, can you get me on that table over there? Well, we, we haven't seen him lose on here yet, so perhaps there's something in that, hey? Ah, maybe it's his lucky table. All right, so we are playing nine ball. And uh, just like in true Derby City Classic, uh, they do things their own way a little bit. So some of the peculiarities would be that we are racking with the nine on the spot instead of the one on the spot. We're breaking with a break box, maybe not the break box, but a break box. What that means is uh, the break box is between the first and the third diamonds uh, along the head string. So maybe a little bit wider than your standard break box, but a break box nonetheless. Um, the one ball must go in the front, nine in the middle. The rest of the balls must be placed at random, except for the two ball. The two ball may not be racked at the back of the rack. You have to put it somewhere else. Uh, three foul rule is in effect. No jump cues. You may jump the ball, but you must use your playing cue. You can't even use your break cue. It must be your full playing cue. So, P.S. with the break. Made a couple of balls and he's got a shot at this one ball and you can't really ask for anything more than that when you're breaking especially from the box it's always a more difficult break trying to make the one in the side just missing that he made one ball on the break that's enough though just a little awkward queuing Unless he can get to the right hand. Well, he can. He can get to the ball completely. Yeah, deciding on a, a safety, but not a very good one, I don't think. That's a poor shot. Yeah, he was, he was close to the ball. He should have been able to do a little better than that. But opportunity for Jeffrey. Surprised. Yeah, I'm a little surprised he didn't go for that, Kevin, actually. I, I thought he was aiming up to have a go at it. Perhaps it was the awkward queuing that put him off it. Maybe he doesn't want to go and do something silly on, his, on the first shot of the first game. You mean like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, well known for his big break. One of the biggest breakers in the game. Certainly one of the most flamboyant breakers. Talk about popping the cue ball on the break. He pops, he does a bit of body popping as well when he breaks. Well, hopefully we'll get to see him do some breaking this, this set. hasn't been going quite so crazy with his breaks certainly in recent matches that I've seen him sometimes he might just put a really really big one in and with hair that big he's in danger of hitting the ceiling here in Derby City <laughs> Got a little bit of a competition going on with Roberto Gomez Superman, so you can get the biggest hair. Yeah, 
Yeah, if I had hair like that, I'd want to be on the stream table every chance I, I could, too. The good old days. <laughs> The only thing, Kevin, that, well, the main attraction when I'm on the stream table is the big ball patch on the top of my head now, which I didn't even know was there until I saw myself on a stream. <laughs> Blinding all the viewers with the reflection? Yeah. He's going to have to dig down on this, draw back, ended up, on, can he go through, forward with it? Looks like he's coming backwards. Yeah. Wow, so much Q power, this guy. Yeah, he put a nice stroke on that. He might even go play the the nine into the same the bottom left as we look now. Yeah, I know his game so well. He loves to spin that cue ball, get, let the stroke out. De Luna strikes first blood, one nothing. Race to nine. Jeffrey the Bull De Luna from the Philippines, actually born on Valentine's Day, 1984. 39 Aww. years old. How sweet. Just in the process of buying a house in Las Vegas. Very smart businessman off the table as well. And he's got a residency, a pro residency at a club called Banging Balls. Quite apt for a guy with a break like his. Banging Balls, that sounds like the kind of pool I need to play at. Yeah, I want one that's called Banging Rails, and then I might go and join <laughs> that one. Marking his one up on the beads. Having to reset them, I think, after the last match on the table. So if he's going to come living in the U.S., then he should, uh, he should be eligible to play on uh, the USA Moscone Cup then. <laughs> How You're many not... times have I had that conversation? Yeah, I know. I think if America had their way, your team would be Jason Shaw, Jeffrey yep. DeLuna, Alex Pegalion, Alex Pegalion, Feder Gorst, and, and uh, Sky. That sounds like a pretty good team. Let's make that happen. I'm not sure our American fans would agree with you completely on that one. <laughs> but, or indeed any of those players that we just mentioned. Dry break leaves a pretty nice look at the one for PS to get started with and a pretty open rack. This two, three, four. A little bit clustered up, but I think he's landed pretty nicely on this two to just roll forward for the three in the side. Yeah, he's got... I don't know what game you're watching, Kevin. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. He rolled through for the three in the side. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what game I'm listening to, to be honest. <laughs> it's early in the morning for me. It's because you're the true pool. You're the you're the pool fanatic. You have probably four games open right now while you know, while commentating on this one too. Because you just can't get enough pool, can you? There's just not enough pool in the world. Mm. 
imagine how miserable I was before the internet. We are definitely in a time of plenty for pool content. Both plain content and instructional content. Something that we didn't have when we were youngins. I had to go to a library and rent a book. <gasps> to buy Accustat videos for $30 each. Which is nothing wrong with. I like Accustat's videos. But that was a different time. They're talking of stats. There's some numbers at the bottom of the screen. The one on the left, not in brackets, is their Fargo rate. There you see 794 for Deluna, 787 for Lebutis. And next to it is the percentage chance of winning. Well, that was a quick last three balls, wasn't it, for Pierce? Yeah. Ties it up one apiece. And you'll see that chance of winning percentage. It does change when the, when the score changes. the one being racked above the nine on the spot and the two anywhere else but at the back of the rack that's the racking rules and if you don't agree with the chance of winning percentage if you think the numbers are off uh, I'm just a messenger go take it up with Mike Page yeah Mike Page Steve Ernst Mm -hmm. creators, inventors of the great Fargo rate, of course. Great guys. Always see them around at a few events a year. Very, very smart cookies. Right, here we go. Pierce with the break. one of them scratches either in the side or one of these bottom corners you often see with the nine on the spot break very hard to control the cue ball didn't get kicked at all though banked twice across and in the corner so ball in hand then for Jeffrey and he made a ball then as well Pierce well he made two including the cue ball of course yeah, one too many. Made the two in the queue. I've got a lovely story about Jeffrey Deluna, which I'll tell you a little bit later on in the match between racks. Okay. A very nice story. Can't wait. You need to say that like when we're about ready to go to a commercial break. Got a great story about Jeffrey, but uh, after the break, so be sure to come back. You, you might have to remind me as well if it's getting towards <laughs> the end of the match and I still haven't told it because I I do get forgetful at my age. Oh, if you're re counting on me to remember something, we're all in trouble. So making very easy work of these. Another draw shot here. Up for the six. Wow, lifted Ooh. his head up. Oh, I'd love to see that again. Players always look at their tip. They should be looking at the top of their head. <laughs> That's what they need to look at. Watch his head. Well, a little bit of movement. Not much. Maybe just snatched it slightly. 
But what a chance for Pierce to take the lead and for oh, it looked impossible, didn't it, to miss from that position? Just shows you. Yeah, I think literally the only way he doesn't get out there is if he miscues. I right, see Jeffrey performing a little tip maintenance over there, a little scuffing. Oh! That ball didn't have to drop. Jeffrey plays with Kamui Tip, sponsored by Kamui, has been for some is now also a Mez sponsored player. In it goes. Pierce says thank you very much. Keep him coming. Yeah, the winning streak continues for the man from Vilnius in Lithuania. Nice little country next to Latvia, very close to Estonia as well, where Dennis Grabe is from, of course. And I bumped into Dennis's dad last night in Thailand, believe it or not. Huh, small world. Sat at the bar with his cup of coffee and cheeseburger, Leon. I actually asked Dennis last night, I was having a word with Dennis just to let him know that his dad's all right. And I said to his, uh, to Dennis, is there anything your dad likes? Is there anything, you know, does he like any particular candy? So he said he really likes butter cookies. So I'm going to get him some butter cookies today and take them, take them to him. Mm, Another like tournament day today for me. I like butter cookies. Well, if I see you in Thailand, I'll bring you some as well. <laughs> oh, made a ball, did he? Yeah, he made a ball. Yeah, Jeff had left his, left his chalk on the table there, look. Just coming back to retrieve it. Master Chalk is the official chalk of the Derby City Classic. So if you see some mass, some chalk on the rail that isn't Master Chalk, you know that's not uh, that's not the tournament chalk. Speaking of equipment, we are of course playing on these beautiful diamond tables with Simonis cloth and Aramith balls. With the Outsville Accurac. So you're playing a push out. Oh, I he might be getting this one back. Unless he wants to try to go for a kick and stick, but Yeah, I think that's what he's hoping. Yeah, he's push it back. Giving it back, and I certainly don't blame him. Yeah, I don't quite understand what Pierce was trying to do there. Well, obviously he feels confident in this kick shot, otherwise he wouldn't have pushed to this spot. Yeah, this can go wrong, though, as we know. Oh, yeah. Quite easy. Easy enough to hit. Yeah, getting a good hit, that's not the hard part. It's coming up with a good result. That's the hard part. Might play this with some right hand English actually. Now has he got cover? Not sure he has, you know. Jeffrey straight round looking at the potting angle. 
I think he's left it. Reigning champion of this event, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Not here this year. Yeah, well, night, well controlled, beautiful shot. Touched the angle to perfection. Surprisingly, Jeffrey DeLuna. Surprisingly, Jeffrey DeLuna has not won any major tournaments. Really, he's, he's always threatened to, you know, be there or thereabouts, but never actually won anything. He did win the nine and ten ball 2020 Mucci Classics. He's won the Manny Pacquiao ten ball doubles and the main nine ball Manny Pacquiao event as well. Manny Pacquiao, you might know. Very famous world championship boxer from the Philippines has his yearly tournament there, the Manny Pacquiao Classic. He's quite a good player as well himself, Manny. Yeah, that is surprising that Jeffrey doesn't have any, really any major titles to his name as good as he plays. I suspect yeah, that will be changing in the not too distant future. I don't think he's ever won the doubles either. The Philippines have won it, but I don't think Jeff DeLuna has been on a winning team for the World Cup at all. Jeffrey DeLuna ties it up, two apiece, race to nine. This is round six action and neither player has a loss. Derby City of course is a single elimination tournament with the option for one buyback so you can get people with zero losses playing people with one loss at any round in the tournament it's not a traditional double elimination you don't have a a side and a b side everyone plays together right up until the finals and i think you also said kevin that after every round is a redraw right yep after every round um you know, uh, after every round, you're going to have some winners and losers. The winners go to the next round. The losers, if they do, if they have a rebuy available, they can rebuy. So of all the winners and of all the people who have rebought, all those names are shuffled up and paired off and, and everyone plays. And we keep repeating that step, that process over and over until we end up with one player left. Some of you more observant people out there might notice, might think that, hey, wait a minute, pair off every round. What if there's an odd number of players in a round? Well, that player, one player is going to get a buy if there's an odd number of players. And that buy could that buy could happen at any round. In fact, usually there's a buy almost every round. You could even get a buy right into the finals. And that does happen fairly often. Just one more way the Derby City Classic is unique. Dry break. 
Yeah, we spoke at the beginning about Jeff's big break, but he's probably breaking at about 75% of what he can break at. I mean, he's yeah. quite yeah, soft breaking, to be honest. Yeah, even if that, you're right. Probably nearer 60%. It's almost like a, a soft break. It's not working, Jeffrey. You need to change something. Yeah, if he doesn't start getting the results he wants on the break, he's going to release the beast, I suspect. He's just having a look at this one. I can't tell if the bank is on. I think the bank is on, but it looks like he's coming to, to go thin off this. Is he going row first? Not going row first, is he? So I don't think he can hit the right-hand side of this, can he? As he looks our left. No, no, he can't. Doesn't look to me like he could hit, you know, like not enough to cut it in or even enough to, sh you know, to hit that side of the ball. Maybe he couldn't even see enough of it to bank it. That's a smart shot. It's got a nice result. Mm. Nicely done. Yeah, without jump cues allowed. I mean, if they were, he'd already have the short stick out, ready to jump over this four ball. I think you are right. Yeah, nicely judged. He's hit it on the right side of the ball with the right speed. How can you go wrong? Nice outcome. He's in a spot of trouble here. Looking at coming between six and seven. Yeah, getting a hit on it doesn't appear to be the difficult part. It looks like a pretty straightforward, pretty easy hit. You don't want to just hit it and leave with Jeffrey straight in. But unfortunately, that's kind of what he's done. Yeah, it's very difficult to get that safe. You needed a little bit of luck. Hit it quite well, just caught the wrong side of the fort with the one there. And as you say, he's left a nice little opening here. May even be able to play the carom into the three and push the three towards the left-hand corner. Yeah, both players All were waiting, looking. of course. Yeah, both players were looking to see if the three passes the four. It does kind of look like he's drawn into the three, doesn't it? I mean, it... I think he's, he's maybe looks a little bit thinner from this particular angle so yeah he's gonna to have to dig down on the cue ball to try and draw into the three oh yeah well it's kind of the shot i thought at the start yeah unfortunately he's really left okay. himself a tough shot on this too But this is Jeffrey territory. This is the shot he loves to draw back off. Big, big shot. Great shot. Is he going to get around him? He is nicely done. Yeah, typical Jeffrey, that shot. You know, 
that particular point I just made about he's a big shot man he loves going for these big shots the crowd pleasers and you know that could also be his downfall as well sometimes and maybe the reason why he's never really won any big titles for that reason you know he loves to go for the the big shot when maybe there's an alternative more conservative shot available but you know I like him for that very exciting player always going for the kill shot perfect cue ball Looks like he can go forward two rails, come between the 6-7 for the 6 on the side. <laughs> Need a big bounce. Yeah, I can just use the 8 here. Just draw off the eight. Well, he has put that eight ball in a kind of a tough spot here. He's really gonna have to come up with a you know a big shot on the seven to get back to the eight. This is not an easy shot. Makes it look easy. Yeah, bearing in mind as well, the last time he tried a deep draw on the five ball, I think it was in the opening rack or one of the earlier racks for sure, and he miscued, so could have affected his confidence a little bit, but it didn't show there. Very beautiful played shot. And another one here. Didn't really play it with any conviction, that one, though. Got a little bit of spin on it. A little bit of reverse. Right, uh, sorry, left-hand English in that case. Didn't really get any movement in the cue ball. Playing it into the bottom right. Changed his mind. Bottom left. <laughs> Flip a coin. Changes his mind again. <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me if he goes back to his original. Yeah. Yeah. Which pocket's the right one to shoot in? Whichever one you feel more confident in. That's And that's the right one. Center of the pocket. Nice shot. That was a great shot. I think Jeffrey has about five children I think he has wife Diane as well very smart business lady in, a, in her own right she actually has a packaging company who make packaging for companies like McDonald's and Bunting Donuts so she's a oh, pretty nice. smart cookie as well yeah Very, very grounded guy. I'm going to tell you that little story about him now. He was, uh, oh, please do. He, he was at the International at the Sheraton there, and I was queuing to get a, a burger or a, a Coke or something, and he was with his wife, Diane, behind, and I stood there eating my burger, having a little chat with him, and he ordered a couple of burgers and a couple of drinks, Mm -hmm. went to pay with his card and they said oh we're sorry we don't take card so he said oh i don't have any cash so he said to me have you got any cash on you marks and i i literally had 30 dollars on me i said yeah 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 
how much do you want? So he says, oh, $20 is okay. So I gave him the $20 cash and then we parted and I didn't see him again the rest of the day and I, it was in the evening, I was getting hungry and I thought, I've got no money on me. <laughs> I couldn't use my card. So um, I get a phone call about 7.30 in the evening and it's Jeffrey and he says, where are you? And I said, I'm still inside at the venue. And he said, oh, can you come down to the, the parking lot? I have your money for you. I said, OK, thank you. And I was so relieved and I <laughs> broke the 100 metre record, I think, getting down to the car park. <laughs> and he gave me a, a couple of notes, which I presumed was two $10 bills. It was dark, so I didn't really look. Thank you very much. He said, no problem. And I got back into the venue and it was actually $40. It was two $20 bills. So oh, I that's, that quickly was awfully called nice him back. Well, yeah, I called him back and said, you've made a mistake, mate, because you've given me 40. I only gave you 20. And he said, that's OK. That's for that's a little bonus for being a little bit of interest for being so nice and lending me the money. And I thought that was a really nice story. That was nice. That was nice of him. <laughs> Unlike this uh, yeah, safety, nice. which was not very nice of him at all. Wait, no, yeah. that was Pius that shot that. <laughs> yeah, Pius played played that like Jeffrey owes him money. <laughs> there is a two railer on here. Mighty accurate though. Missed that three ball. And he was mighty accurate. Ah, uh, catching the two though. He's left a shot, a nice and easy start up for Pierce to take the sixth rack and get back level again. Racing to nine, so they're both going to be a third of the way there. If Pierce can run these. Looks like he has the perfect angle to just draw out for the two to the corner. Yeah, just like that. Pius is very considerate like that. He lets us know exactly what he's going to do. It's almost we've almost like we've got our own telestrator, <laughs> you know, where we can put the little mark on the on the table to show where the cue ball's going. Have you Pius ever thought of investing in one of them, Kevin? Um. A telestrator. I I I wrote my own that I that I used for uh, several years, but uh, I stopped using it because people tend to not really like it all that much. Uh, they get kind of annoyed when I scribble on the screen a lot. Um, plus, at some of the tournaments we live stream, uh, we the 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 video output from the software is displayed live on TV. And we wouldn't want the players to be seeing what we're telestrating because that's kind of like a form of like coaching for the players. You know, we wouldn't want that or maybe distracting the players. It's like, what? Why in the why in the world would they be suggesting I go that route? Boy, those commentators are idiots. And meanwhile, they miss a shot because they they think we're idiots. <laughs> so I just stopped using it. Yeah, I couldn't be trusted with one, I don't think. I'd be writing all kinds of things on the screen. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little bit of work to do from five to six. A bit near to the rail. It's going to have to dig down here. And as we know, as soon as you raise the butt of the queue, you have to make sure... You're striking that cue ball exactly where you mean to. Well, he's not going to strike down, is he? Oh, a little bit. A little bit of like that stun follow, a little bit with some side spin. 
nicely, uh, nicely controlled for the six on the side. Got the makings of being a very close match. Played that confidently. Yes, you did. Sometimes you can underhit them and end up hooking yourself behind the nine, but played it very well. Yeah, there's hardly a worse feeling than hooking yourself behind, you know, the one ball that's on the table, you know, other than the ball you're shooting at. But PS ties it up, three apiece, race to nine. I am Kevin Ross, being joined by Mark White. Hello. Howdy. Very nice to be Green had froze for a second there. <laughs> I mean, he's really putting some extra work into making sure those balls are nice and tight with the Accurac. Scrutinizing them very, very closely. Did the same with the break there as well. Took a very long time to to break the balls. He made one, and I think he can get through to this one ball. Yeah, I can't tell. I mean, he can see it. I don't know if he can see enough to make it. Hard to tell. I don't. Doesn't look like he has enough to make it. So not naturally, he'll probably shoot it straight in. It must be pretty close because he's maybe not as maybe it's not on. He's looking now at thinning this one, I think. Yeah. I think there's a just an edge ball around the angles behind the three. Very thin. Just not enough pace. Fortunately for Jeffrey, that six ball kind of prevents, you know, the, the hit and stick. He can't kick behind this one because it's just going to hit the six. Can he thin off this? Can he see it? I think he can go row first and thin it. Oh, he could see well, it. Oh, he could see it. Yeah. It's 
got distance. And again, I think you can see it, but not enough to make it. Probably have to bank the one straight up the table, try to get that cue ball over just to the headrail up there. Possibly behind the six. I think he might be able to get through to this, Kelly. Oh, you think he, you think he can? I think he can. Okay. Only because he looked at the, the position of the six to see if he can miss the six if he makes it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he's shooting at this. Yeah, he's worried about the six, but he's okay. Got a nice little flick off it. Yeah, you should be able to go two rails around the six, no problem. A little bit of a stretch, maybe, for the left-hander. He's not the biggest of chaps. Might need an extension on his cue. Okay. Yep, there Come on, goes. listen to me, Jeffrey. Listen to me, Jeffrey. I told hmm. you you need an extension. It's all right. There's no shot clock, he, so he could uh, he could afford to waste a few seconds trying it out first. Yeah, but you see, that proves my point. If we had to tell it straight, and now I'd be writing all over the screen. Get your extension. Get your extension. <laughs> That's when I take the tablet away from you. Yeah, I definitely can't be trusted with <laughs> stuff like that. Even now it's a stretch. Why don't they just get the bridge out? I wish more players would just start practicing the bridge a little bit more. I'd love to know the percentages of missed shots when they're overreaching, you know. Maybe that's something Fargo can work on for us. Bridge stats. That would be interesting to know. Oh, he's yeah, changed. Pot success with the bridge. He's changed to drawing it instead of following it. He changed his mind. Guess he thought he was going to be coming a little too close to the six. Yeah, Maybe he couldn't miss on it. This, if he's straight on this three, he's going to have to draw back off this as well. So a big Deluna draw here. Looks like he has a little bit of angle. Well, it looks like he is drawing it, though, doesn't it? All right, now it looks like he's going forward. Not the result he was looking for, but this will work. Yeah, he hit it hard, but didn't get much action off the cue ball. Like, the cue ball slid off the rails, This, you know, which might be what happened, because this is relatively new cloth. The rails are a little bit slippery. Yeah, I mean, he's a little bit fortunate to have a shot like this, because he's not got, not got to do anything with a cue ball. Just make the four. Do you pound this off the rail, or are you just nice and gentle roll forward? He's going to pound it out. Oh, this is the no ball problem. we're talking about. No problem.
We have quite a battle here. 4-3, race to nine. I don't know that any players ever had a two-game lead. No, you're right. Not yet. Making sure that rack is dead straight. We should start putting players on a shot clock actually for racking the balls up. Yeah, <laughs> rack clock and, and one break of the most, clock. Yeah, one of the most frustrating things for me is when players are racking the balls, you know, sometimes it takes so long. I know yeah. it's a very, very important part of the game, but it does get a little bit annoying sometimes. Yeah, it can get really bad when you're using the triangle to rack. You know, it's not that bad with a template rack, usually. But with the... What happened? Oh, our player's on break? Okay, players are on break. <laughs> He's just practicing, uh, practicing breaking. Okay, players are on break. We'll be right back. Alright, players are back from break. Yeah, at a lot of tournaments, uh, when a player is on break, the other player is not allowed to practice or, or anything like that. I'm not sure what the rule at Derby City is. Derby City tends to be more laid back in a lot of respects, so wouldn't surprise me if, if that's allowed here. I'm not sure. There you see that tattoo on the left arm, the bull. Yep. Don't forget to put your glove back on, Jeffrey. <laughs> He didn't hear you. Jeffrey, don't forget your glove. Yeah, P.S. telling him to get on with it there, I think. Jeff wanting a little bit of a conversation. P.S. not interested. Saying get on with it. soft break Hey, I'm Sky Woodward. I'm two-time Moscone Cup MVP, and you're watching Hello, Sky Woodward, look. That is Sky Woodward. <laughs> Whoops. More editing homework for me. Looking a little bit agitated, sitting there finding lots of things to do, moving his drink around and not looking very calm. Alright, is this two going to side or is he going to uh, bank the two out of there, roll the cue ball forward behind the six? I think he was looking at cross-banking this into the other side pocket. 
the way he was queuing up. He wants to he's shoot. He's going into the side here. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, he really wants to shoot. Yeah, this is where I believe the shot clock is the player's friend because sometimes you can overthink things when you're when you're not on a shot clock. Yep. The old saying, think long, think wrong. Yeah, a lot of the times your first gut instinct is the, it's the right way forward. I think he's just looking at, was he just looking at uh, banking the two and then just rolling forward by the six? Is that what he was just looking at? No, I think he was looking at thinning off the two, bringing the cue ball over behind the nine. Just there, I think he was looking at the path of the cue ball if he were to go for the bank, coming two rails around the eight nine. I think that's the shot, to be honest. Banking the two? Yeah, I think he's he's quite a good bank player as well. I mean, the safety is very difficult. The, the cut into the side pocket is very low percentage, I think. Well, in the end, he played a very smart shot. Yeah, that was uh, that was creative. It was just bordering on too long, though. That shot, to be honest. I mean, even you know, with the shot clock there, sixty seconds after the break, you normally get. And then another 30 if you want it. It's a good two minutes, that. Actually, I'm going to go back and look and see how long it was. All right, that was a good hit. Yeah, it's forced a mistake, though. And this is definitely... Jeffrey De Luna territory. A little stun off the side rail, back out. All right, let's see. The break happened at 57 minutes, 37 seconds. And he shoots. was about three and a half minutes it looks like three minutes it took a while normally you know I normally judge it by when I'm beginning to get bored by <laughs> one particular shot you know and and that was I think it just breached boredom <laughs> so your, uh, your your internal boredom clock is calibrated for three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah. I think nearer two and a half. Well, then your uh, internal boredom clock, you must have had to hit the snooze button on it several times during that one uh, shot that took six minutes on a match we commentated on last week. 
That must have been John Pinnegar. <laughs> uh, actually, no, it was uh, Ryan Hollingsworth. When you looked at a thankful that when you looked at a bank shot on the wall for a while. <laughs> sorry, mate. I'm thankful that um, my memory is slightly quicker to disappear than my boredom threshold. <laughs> knows you might even be streaming me on this tournament next uh, oh, providing I draw a big name of course I mean I'm not for one minute suggesting I deserve to be on the stream table <laughs> but if I draw somebody like Jason Shaw or Shane Van Boning or Fedor maybe I might get on the stream trying to make this in the side is he yeah you should uh Oh, very nice try. Yeah, you should absolutely uh, play. It's it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun. It's a it's a bit of a grind, but you know it's not too expensive. One hundred and sixty dollars, and you get to play against all these great players. Actually, I hope I draw Piers Labutis because I'm bound to be on the stream table then. <laughs> Down cue ball. Yeah. Bit of an awkward angle here. Yeah, it's one of them he's got to reach for again, so the extension's going to come out. funny you mentioned specifically Shane and Jason those two players specifically are the reason we had to put up a camera on a third table <laughs> oh is it both players refuse to play on these two tables here that we had our cameras on too close to the walls what? and the pillars and things for their extra long cues because they both shoot with uh, those extra long cues you know the extension permanently attached and they kept on hitting the walls and the pillars over here so they said he refused to play on these two tables anymore. So he had to put a camera on a third table for them. Wow, that's interesting. Another interesting little fact as well. Jason has just stopped using the extension on the back of his cue. It's, he's been doing a few little tweaks to his technique. And one of them, I believe, was to take the one of the extensions off the back of his cue. I think it's because he wants to play on a Railbirds TV uh, uh, streaming table. <laughs> He's willing to do whatever it takes. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. He just cannot make up his mind how he wants to shoot this six. He was looking at outside English, inside English. Center ball. The natural angle 
natural angles to go into the seven, I think, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what he was worried about, and he knew it. And isn't it strange he still played the shot? Because that looked a hundred percent to me that he was going to clip the the seven, unless he did something with the cue ball. Ended up playing it plain ball. Yeah, it sure looked like it was going to go right into the seven. If you just shot, you know, just natural center ball. Might take the bank on here. Might even play it down the rail. Very thin, isn't it? Does, it does four look four like times he's... across. Yeah, you tempted it. Yeah, when I see... I remember Johnny Archer used to love to shoot those shots and the cue ball go back and forth like five times. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, in the end, it was a bit of a half-hearted attempt. Don't think he'd quite convinced himself of that shot, to be honest. He's going to play this right-handed look. He's ended up pretty straight on the eight, but I think he'll be okay. Just he can just draw back and take a cut shot on the nine. For the first time in the set, we have a two-game lead, 5-3, race to nine. At least I think it was the first time in the set. Yeah, you're right. I see Jeffrey wiping down his cue a lot there. I actually play with a, a carbon fiber brake cue, the BK Rush, and when you get that cue, you actually get some special wipes with it in little sachets. Yeah. Specifically made for, for carbon fibre. And it surprises me how maybe, you know, some of the players don't, you know, you don't see them using them at the table. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'm poor. I can't afford all these fancy carbon fiber uh, shafts and cue sticks, so I just have the good old-fashioned wood, so no special wipes required. Well, I, I, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't have had one either, <laughs> Kevin. If it makes you feel any better, it's only because I got given them by Predator, so thanks for that. <laughs> that was nice of them. Yeah, they gave me actually a choice of any cues I wanted. Of course, I chose the BK Rush, the Air Rush Jump, but Naturally. surprisingly, I went for the Wood Shaft, the 314. And I've hmm. always played with the 314, and I love it. Well, stick with what works. No, oh, I didn't say it worked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stick with what you're uh, comfortable with. How about that? That's better. Jeffrey feeling very confident and comfortable at the moment. As Kevin just said, first time to rack lead, race to nine. 
four away from the finish line. Pierce still needs six. Let's have a look at this break. Is he going to put a bit more into it, into it, or is he going to stick with the softer option? And that cue ball very close to that diamond line. I'm telling you, very close. Yeah, still going with a softer, more controlled break, and he has scratched. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate to get a kiss off the one ball there. Didn't make a ball anyway. If it's any consolation, Pierce would have had a shot on the one anyway, had the cue ball not scratched. Pierce has kind of ended up on the wrong side of this two ball. Being forced yeah, they to play. broke so nicely, didn't they? Yeah. They broke perfectly, but he's messed that up slightly. Okay, he's still on it. He's okay. He's going towards the four, but I'm not sure this is how he played it. Oof. He's finding himself on the wrong side of the straight in line quite a bit so far, this rack. Kind of struggling with the speed a little bit. going in cleanly is it yeah he's not shooting with that same confidence that he was shooting with uh, a few games ago he's gonna move the rack here I think is he no I thought he'd come down to move the rack Now he will. It may not have been the cleanest of runouts, but it's the result that matters. 4 3, I mean, 4 5 in this race to nine. Let's time how long it takes him to set the balls up. Let's imagine there's a 30 second shot clock on setting the balls up. Well, I think he heard you. He's moving faster I think he now. heard me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 15 seconds. 10 seconds left. I thought you'd press the the fast forward button for a second there when he started setting them up I think he heard you that was under 30 seconds <laughs> oh I meant to set them up and break the balls not just set the balls up There you see Pierce slightly inside that first diamond mark of the break box. More in keeping with the matchroom break. Matchroom break box slightly different. Alright, dry break. No look at the one. 
Where are we pushing out to? Somewhere along this footrail? Right between the 7-9 maybe along the footrail? I think that's what he's doing. Yeah, I don't think Pierce will give this back. I think he can send the one ball back down this end of the table. Cue ball behind the six. Also option of thinning off the left hand side of it. Bring the cue ball down behind the three, four. Yeah, he's got options, so I don't think he's going to be passing it back either. It's kind of interesting. You know, it, it, that gives another level, doesn't it, to the push-out. I've never really thought of it like that before, but you really don't want to be pushing into an area where you're giving your opponent options as well, because you're twice as, you know, less likely to get it back so if you've left two options it's kind of advantage to the incoming player if you get my meaning I do well the push out is such a hard shot anyway I mean because the person doing the pushing is always at the disadvantage because the other person has the option so right away they have the advantage because, because they have the option well, he has given it back. Huh, well, I'm this is interesting then. Yeah, I am as well. So it'd be interesting to see now how Jeffrey plays this. Wouldn't surprise me to see him, see him thin this, you know. Well, he's going the other way, I think. Is he? That looks to me like he's thinning off the left. Yeah, he's thinning off the left. Yeah, right behind his cluster. Oh, he didn't get there. And he's left a shot on the he one, got, I think. Yeah, he All caught right. it a bit thick, didn't he? Looked like he was aiming thick on that. That's why the cue ball came back into the center of the table too early. Well, the decision to pass it back seems to have paid off. table you can see in your picture John Pinnegar of course masters sponsor this and there's no one that uses more masters chalk than John Pinnegar the man on the left in the red shirt Master's Chalk is like, yes, absolutely, we'll sponsor your tournament. Oh, wait a minute, is Jonathan Pinner going to be in that tournament? No, sorry, we can't sponsor that tournament. <laughs> he'll, he'll, uh, it costs us too much money in chalk to sponsor. I'm surprised he hasn't got chalk manufacturers banging at his door, to be honest. an interesting cue ball path a little bend to it there high right spin he'll be going for the three four does the three go past the four I don't think it does does it it doesn't look like it to me I think he's gonna have to play a combination Which is not the end of the world. It's a pretty makeable combination as long as he gets good on his three. If he gets out there, if he gets out there. Oh, I think he came up short. Oh, he did come up short. He has. Yep. Takes another long, hard look at his tip. Yeah, we've seen that 
several times this match where Jeffrey's just not getting the action on the cue ball that he wants, especially when he's coming off the rail. okay as a containing safety but once again options for Pierce yeah seen a bit more back and forth than what I would expect from these two players especially this game Yeah, well, this is the 10th rack, and we've not really seen anyone dominate. I can't remember a break and run, to be honest. Yeah, I can't remember any. Been a going very thin office. Up behind the six is the target. Five ball lending a helping hand. But yeah, this has been a very close match. It's been within one game for most of the match. There was a brief period when there was a two game gap, but it's been mostly one game gap or or level. Yeah, Jeffrey. Opened up a two rack lead to go 5 3, but Pierce came back and won the next one, of course, which is why we're at 5 4. Still a chance, though, that he could restore that, but he needs to come up with something a little bit special here because he's hooked on this three. He needs to get it safe, especially with that four ball over the pocket. Good solid hit and well. He's got a good result. A little bit lucky, yeah, but it hey, that's okay. The hand. <laughs> Acknowledging he had a little bit of a run there. And once again, this rule from Derby City Classic where you're only allowed to jump your playing cue. The jump cue would be straight out in this situation. I mean, it's almost a hanger, isn't it, with the jump cues these days? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no jump cues. That definitely makes this game more interesting. Makes the safety game more interesting. Yeah, I had a little question for you earlier, actually. I forgot to ask it. Yeah? How do you, how do you feel that there's often been some talk about taking the push-out shot out of the game and I must admit I'm kind of a fan of that I'd like I'd just like to see you you know get what you get kind of thing and you've got to get out of it, it doesn't mm. happen in eight ball does it or anything like that you've got to take something well that's interesting I kind of like it of course, I would prefer to keep the push out in 10 ball, but in 9 ball, removing the push out, I think, is an interesting uh, concept. Yeah, I agree with that as well because, you know, 9 ball is a luckier game. There's more, you know, flukes are allowed. Yep. And there's always a chance that you're going to fluke a ball. If you're hooked on the one, you've got to go for it or, you know, hooked on any of the, the lowest ball. You have to play a shot, and I kind of like that because I don't know the push out that people say it's an art, but is it really? It's a bit of a lottery in my eye. <laughs> like I was just saying earlier, how tough the push shot is, and you're always at the disadvantage anyway. Yeah, just get rid of it. That, yeah. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't mind getting rid of it because I hate having to push out because I don't like having to think that hard. It's 
why I like nine ball. I don't. I don't have to think too much. Yeah, it's almost like worth taking the that's a nice the hit. push out option. Take the push out out option out, and give players an extra extension a rack or something, or extend the clock by ten seconds or something. You know. Let's complicate pool even more than it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway, I'm on board, Mark. Let's get rid of the push out in nine ball. Keep it in ten ball. Be, get rid of it in nine ball. I'm on board. Let's do it. Well, I think this is the perfect tournament to try it at. You know, the Derby City, where they've all, already got their own quirky little rules. Yeah, Just I agree. Try it. Try it here. You know, to see what players think, and more importantly, to see what the public think as well. You know, to. It just, I think it just, you know, it's almost like adding another dimension to the game because, you know, you're, although you're taking one out, you're you're replacing it with a more interesting one in mind where they've got to play a shot. I like it. I'm on board. Let's do it. Yeah, it's more creative. I think you have to be more creative. Case closed. <laughs> it's official. Yep, it's been decided. That was a nice little shot. Two rail escape here. Yeah, simple but effective. He's looking at the one rail. go right here I suppose he could fluke the bank yeah looks like he was trying to thin yeah. off it and missed it surprised he played it that way I must admit a gift for Pierce indeed Does he have angle or is he straight in? Can he go forward two rails? No, he's straight in. There's your answer. Nope, you just heard him call that friend Reyes, Gerson Martinez, table 19. Table 19, that's a railbirds table. We'll have that match coming up for you guys later. As you know, I love words and I love names and people's names and what they mean. And I've just looked up Labutis. Yeah. It's actually like a greet, like a greeting in Lithuania, like saying hi. And Pius says hi to tying it up. Nah, I don't know. That doesn't really work. Anyway, five apiece. Race to nine. <laughs> I'll leave that to the professionals. We just have to find one. <laughs> Oh, 
well here's another useless piece of information for you i've just also looked up his fat his uh name pius and it yeah. comes from the latin pious which means dutiful of living a virtuous man devout blessed there you go This isn't just entertainment, it's education as well. For the youngsters I can uh, who are watching. I can I can I can sense all the thumbs down coming now just because, hey we didn't tune in to learn something. We don't want to learn something, we just want to watch pool. You can't make <laughs> me learn, stop it. I'm doing it subliminally. I'm trying to get them to teach pool in in schools actually we when i was a youngster and, and i was working in the local snooker hall and i was a coach there we used to have our local school who were offered snooker as part of their sports choices and three times a week monday wednesday and friday we used to have classes come over and take some lessons in pool a lot of them of course were taking it just to get out of doing a proper class yeah, I would uh, I would do that. We actually got some very very decent players. I can think of about 3 actually that made it quite you know to quite a good standard in the amateur side. Became 100 break people. Didn't Nick Varner play pool for his college team when he was in college? Who did? I think so. Who? Nick Varner. Ah, oh, Nick Varner. Wow. I can't tell if he's got him hooked or not. I think he has. I think he's looking at bending the cue ball round slightly. I saw him furiously chalking that tip. So maybe he's going a lot of English here. No, he can hit it. The way he's aiming. No problem. I think he had exactly the alleyway needed just to pocket the ball. Yeah, sometimes it works as a good guide, doesn't it, Kevin? Yeah. just can't get ahead in this match always been one behind at least always playing catch up I think Jeffrey wanted to make sure he left the cue ball where he could reach it shot he enjoys that one a little bit of distance to punch it in like we've seen many times before Jeffrey De Luna, Jeffrey De Luna takes a one game lead six to five race to nine the percentages at the bottom of your screen fluctuating Always been in favour of Jeffrey De Luna being a higher Fargo rated player. I 
but just barely. Just barely the higher Fargo rate. And Fargo rate was saying this was going to be a close match with Jeffrey with the slight with the slight edge, and well, I think that's pretty much what we've had so far. Yeah, I think Fargo is the best rating system out there. World renowned. What's your Fargo, Kevin? Well, seeing as how I haven't played pool in three years, uh, who knows what it is now. It's probably 200 if I tried to pick up a Q-Stick today, but last time I played, uh, it was uh, in 670-something. Wow, that's high. In, uh, was it March, maybe April of uh, 2020? Just before the whole world shut down, that was the last time I played. Last time I played pool, the whole world shut down, and I stopped playing pool. And well, I just haven't uh, started again once everything opened back up. You see, I can't watch pool without it making me want to go and pick up my cue again, and that's really what got me back into playing again. I mean, I hadn't played for three years, I guess. But then as soon as I started commentating on it, and oh, I, you got the itch, I just huh? think I've learned so much. Yeah, I've just learned so much from watching these great players. You know, I'm always absolutely traveling around around the world, looking at all these great players up close and personal, and getting to chat with them. And you, you know, you do pick up little little tips here and there, you know. And it's certainly helped my game. And my Fargo is on the rise, which I'm very pleased. Um, at the moment, a 5.75. I reckon I'm round about on top form about 6.50. I reckon it's a it's a fair rough Fargo for me. If I put in put in the practice, but you still got to give me weight, Kevin. <laughs> What are you talking about? You've been telling me about all these tournaments you've been winning over these last uh, couple of weeks. I haven't played in three years, and you've been winning tournaments. You want me to give you weight? Spoken like a true pool player. <laughs> well, there's a late entry. The eight in the side. Two balls off the break. Look at that five and the four. Perfectly lined up. Needs to make the one and the three. And he's out. Yeah, does that one pass the six? And even if it does, it's not an easy shot, especially trying to get a shot on the three. You got to go up and down table, avoid the nine. Yeah, you can play it with a touch of outside just to widen the angle slightly. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> I think his opponent just got a little bit of a run against him, maybe. A little bit of a jelly <laughs> roll. Yeah, he's going at this. Tough shot. We'll know if it's in before him. It's not. Come off the table, Jeffrey. It's not your turn. <laughs> I think you got to shoot this one nice and soft, yeah? Nice, nice soft billiard. Play position for the one in the left corner. Yeah, it's an option. Over distance. Yeah, you don't like to shoot it soft over a distance. Do that drag draw to help straight keep the cue ball straight. Ooh, was that a good oh. hit? 
<laughs> no, it was a foul, wasn't it? Yeah, let's have another look at that. Yep, hit the six first, I believe. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bad a hit. Yes, yeah. it is a bad hit. Bad hit. It was. Yeah, Jeffrey just trying to explain. That's why the one ball went the way it did. This is interesting. Yeah, we can see with the replay it was a, a bad hit, but I wonder what conclusion they will come to. Usually when there's no referee watching and they can't agree if it was a good hit or a bad hit, usually the it, it goes to the shooter. I think it should be a re-rack, to be honest, if they can't agree on it and there's no... Yeah, yeah, yeah he's uh, just, just showing him now. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, he's right. Yep, that's uh, everything uh, Jeffrey's saying is exactly right, I believe. Yeah, I think it's fair to say Jeffrey has been involved in a few controversial moments throughout his career, but he's very, very passionate about the game. And I've got to say on this particular occasion, he's 100% correct. We have the benefit of the replay, of course. Right. But even before the replay, it looked like a bad hit to us. Yeah, it looked like a bad hit to me. I think it's because... Pierce was down the other end of the table. Jeffrey was very, very close to it. And I know Pierce as well, and he's very, very... What's the right word? Very straight guy. He believes in his mind as well. It's not like he's trying to cheat. It's just that he, he actually believes it. I think the best thing they can do here, if they can't agree, is to re-rack the balls. Looks like they're going to go try to find a referee and try to get a ruling. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, looks like players are back, and I think they brought a referee with them to explain their case. All right, that's Bill Stock. We'll see what Bill has to say about it. I don't know what Bill's going to say, but what I suspect he's going to say is I can't make a ruling based on what you're telling me, so the shot goes to the shooter, or he's going to say I can't make a ruling based on what you're telling me, replay the game. I think it's going to be one of those two things. I don't think Jeffrey's going to get ball in hand out of this. No, I think that's the, that's the least likely thing to happen. He's not going to get ball in hand. I think the best Jeffrey can hope for here is... Well, is the re-rack, but I think over that, he'd rather just play the game from where the balls have stopped, to be honest. Maybe Jeffrey just plays from there, I think, could be the fairest rule. And don't give him ball in hand. That's an option. Well, uh, I think maybe uh, Bill is agreeing with Jeffrey, is what it's starting to look like. This will be interesting to see how he rules. No, it wasn't that close, I don't think. It was further away. He's 
called a foul, hasn't he? I yeah. think that's what Pierce I heard. not happy about it. Yeah, the referee called a foul there. You clearly heard it. Well, if Pierce goes back and watches this match, he will be pleased to know maybe that it was the right call. Right now, he feels like it's the wrong call, but it was the right call. Yeah, I'd actually like you to make a nice little clip of that for me, and, and I'll send it to Pierce. I can do that. Yeah, I think that's that'd be a good thing to do, and I'll do the same. I'll send it to Jeffrey as well. Or just tell him to watch the video. We'll post the link. You know, we got to we got to increase our views on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we can do that as well. Yeah, I can make a note of the time. Just play it one more time yeah. for him. There you see the. Th Six ball struck first. Clearly. Yeah, so as soon as you get this one uploaded, Kevin, send me the link and the time of that. Or I can watch it. It's at 6-5 the score, right? I'm going to make a little note of that myself. So there's the 4-5, which we spoke about earlier on. We said it was all about the three ball. Well, it became all about the one ball, didn't it, for a little while? Yeah, who knew that was going to be a controversy? <laughs> and remember what we said just before that shot, Kevin? about how difficult it is to play that particular shot over distance at such a slow pace and it proved to be a downfall for Pierce Laboutis and it's going to be a two rack lead again this time at 7-5 for Jeffrey De Luna you can't say he's on a charge but he's certainly El Matador at the moment he's in charge Clean the cue ball. Yeah, and I'm sure Pierce is sat in his seat there feeling really, really upset, disappointed, maybe even wrongly accused in that particular instance, but the replays which we've showed time and time again show that he did hit the six ball first and it's cost him this rack I say it's cost him he's still got to make yeah. this nine ball <laughs> he hasn't made this nine yet The longer he takes, the more likely he is to talk himself out of it. Seven five, race to nine. Actually, I wonder if the other camera angle shows that uh, hit or miss hit any more clearly. I want to have a look at the other angle here. Let's uh, let me switch angles to. There. Let's see. Well, it shows it as good. 
It's hard to tell. Yeah, I, I can't see it as clearly from this angle. Once more, please. Oh, I'm just going to say once more because... Yeah. Six ball first. It looks um, slightly, looks slightly different from that angle, but this one is the angle where it shows it absolutely perfectly. Yeah, well, this ca this camera is a little bit higher quality camera, so I can do slow motion a little better from this angle than the other angle. Yeah, once more, please, Mr. Oh, Ross. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. I thought we might as well while Jeffrey's racking the balls. Hey, you're not allowed to have the two at the back. Yeah, two at the back. I wonder, will Pierce spot it? Is it a foul break? Is it a break to your opponent? We already saw it once, and it went unnoticed. I don't think Pierce is even looking, to be honest. I don't think he wants to look. I think you have to call it before the break. Once the break happens, I think it's too late to do anything about it at that point. Yeah, I think you'd call it anyway. If, if you saw it, it's the kind of shot you call, isn't it? Well within that third diamond there. Cubal has to be between first and third diamonds, of course, on that back rail. Oh, and it was that two ball that went very, very close. Three ball going in the corner, the wing ball. This is a bit easier than the one ball that Jeffrey missed last rack, which was the precursor to all that controversy. The one six. Yeah, and the cue ball's in a much better position. It's not frozen to the rail, and there isn't a there isn't a six ball blocking half the pocket. Nice touch. Anywhere just off straight. Oh, this four in the side. Oh, he's gone maybe a little bit further than he wanted. Two rails between the 6-9, yep. Perfect, nicely done. Yeah, he yeah, does wipe down that down queue. The queue again. Yeah. He does wipe yeah. that down a lot. But, you know, I was just going to say, Kevin, that this, he knows, this is the crucial ball now in this match. Yes. Crucial ball in a crucial game. First one to the hill is always crucial. Now I've got a little question for you. This is to see if you were listening the last time we commentated together. What does being on the hill, where did that come from, that phrase, on the hill? Where did it come from? Oh, it's easy. That comes from uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Another no, Filipino is that not it? Trait that, no, it wasn't that. 
and I'm not even going to let you answer now. <laughs> Forever people will believe that that is where that comes from. <laughs> I think the game's been going slightly longer than Star Wars, though. Oh, you don't mean this game. You mean pool in general. Okay. Nice speed. This nine ball to put Jeffrey on the hill. Takes this game by the horns. 8-5, race to nine. Yes, I did spot it, Kevin. What did you spot? Making it by the bull, taking it by the horns. Oh, oh, my, my bad pun. Well, did you not mean it? Did you not mean it? I did. Of course you did. I'm, I'm not turning you into a bit of an English man, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Are the That's English known for uh, their love of bad puns? Well, we like to say good puns, but yeah. <laughs> I guess it's a matter of perspective. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there's a very famous newspaper. I guess it's the equivalent of your like National Enquirer or something like that. It's called the Sun newspaper. It's a bit of a you know, it's a tabloid and it's not really taken seriously. And they're very famous for their. Are you saying the Are you saying the National Enquirer isn't taken seriously? Well, just what I read in the sun. That's the, I, I heard that in the sun. I don't know whether it's true or not. So, Jeffrey's last break. Can he make it a good one? So, I interrupted you. What were you saying about the sun? Are you saying they have uh, punny headlines or something like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're well. They're known for their great puns as headlines. Well, you stuck with that same soft break for the whole match. Gonna live by the soft break, die by the soft break. He's uh, not changing. Pius, when Jeffrey broke dry, Pius was right to the table and was ready to shoot the one straight in without his usual, you know, taking a few laps around the table and looking at everything from every angle. He just wanted to shoot the one immediately. Wonder if, uh, wonder if he's a bit on edge from that uh, previous game still. I think he's at the no point of no return here. So he's just going to go out, guns blazing. I think he's a better player as well. He's more in rhythm. Yeah, quick look, gets down. A couple of little feathers. Makes the ball. Yeah, this is definitely the fastest he's played this entire set. Yeah, and he's doing pretty well simple. by he's doing pretty well with it too. And that was just a little bit careless, but he's got he's okay, he's got a little bit of an angle, can just stun this off the side route. Yeah, 
uh, couldn't get away from it, but pretty straightforward eight. This game not over yet. Takes full advantage of that dry break by Jeffrey. 8-6, race to nine. Yeah, I would say, go ahead. I was just gonna say, hopefully that when Pierce does see the replay of that incident with the one six, Hopefully he'll put Jeff back on his Christmas card list. <laughs> well, I think the uh, players are uh, taking a break again. Yep, so we'll be right back. And we're back. Gotta make yeah, sure no one came. <laughs> Gotta make sure no one came by and messed with the rack while you were gone. You took the words out of my mouth there. I was just going to say, well, you set them up just now. No one's been near or by the table, <laughs> but he's just having another quick look. He's not trusting anyone at the moment, is he? Not even himself. Great break. Yeah, you can't ask for much more than that. Made two balls on the break, and he's straight in on the two, and everything's wide open. Yeah. I mean, this this two to the two to the three is the hardest shot of this match of this of this rack. Yeah, it's fair to say, Kevin. I think that's his best break of the match, and as you say, yes, this first shot is. The key one in this rack, everything else, pretty straightforward for somebody of Pierce's class. Well, that six ball could pose a problem because the seven ball is not hanging in the pocket. It's off to the side a little, making the six-seven combination a little tricky. So that six ball could be an issue. Let's not forget, there's a bit of pressure as well in this particular match now. Every shot that Pierce takes could be his last. He'd love to get on that six ball in the side, one of the side pockets if he can. Just looking where he wants the cue ball. So anywhere short side, we'll give him a shot into either sen either centre pocket. Well, all, all pockets, apart from the seven, played it well. He's not going anywhere just yet. Three more balls, and he'll be breaking to go heel heel. Just enough room to squeak past that nine. Good 
run it just slightly, but no problem. Two in a row for Pius, and was that the first break and run of the set? Yes, it was. Thanks to everyone for watching. Plenty to watch on the Railbirds TV channel. I'm Mark White with Kevin Ross. Hello. Go ahead, give us a like and a subscribe if you like us, of course. And if you want to subscribe, if you don't, don't do it. But we'd love you to. And then you'll get all the notifications as well, of course. If you press that little bell, every time Railbirds post something new, you'll be the first to know about it. Lord Jeffrey questioning the rack now. This really has got everything. I think he's saying the nine's not on the spot. Or is he saying there's a gap there? Is he allowed to check his opponent's rack? I don't see why not. If it's a if it's a rack your own tournament, the opponent should be allowed to check the rack. Make sure you're not doing something funny with the rack. Yeah, I wonder what made Jeffrey come up and check this particular rack, though. It's the first time he's done it. Maybe because it was the first time PS broke and ran? Yeah, could be. Or just because we're getting uh, close to the end of this set and... Tensions are high. Yeah, I wanted you to be the one that said that, not me. <laughs> I have to bump into these players all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll take one for the team, Mark. Jeffrey's still not happy. Hmm. I think he's saying there's a Doesn't gap want... on the two ball, I think is what he was saying. And if there is a gap Jeffrey. on that two ball, uh, that that would allow, you know, that two ball would probably go flying straight into that corner pocket if there was a gap there. So if there is a gap, you know, Jeffrey's right to say something. I think he also just said something about racking the two ball at the back. He's already done that once himself. Oh, this has had everything, hasn't it, this match? Yeah. It has been one of our longer matches, to be honest. Pierce having a little smile about it. Jeffrey's not actually allowed to touch the rack. Oh, 
Jeffrey might be nicknamed the ball, but I think inside Pierce is raging. All right, they successfully got all nine balls frozen to the table. Pius with the break. Five ball, six ball, both five and six. No shot at the one, but I suspect a uh, kick safety coming up. Well, he might leave him a very, very thin edge down by this bottom on this bottom rail by the one put it on that diamond there nearest to the right hand corner pocket if you're gonna push well, you might be able to see the edge of this thin I think he's got a push yeah exactly there leave him a thin I wouldn't leave him too much of this two ball I wouldn't leave him all of it Taking me 16 racks, Kevin, but I might have finally called a shot right here. <laughs> no, he's going for the kick. <laughs> it's going for the kick safety. I knew it. Oh, and he's hit it thin. I thought he'd go for the full hit. But he's only left about half the ball, not enough to shoot it to the corner. I might have left him enough to send the one ball up and down and get the cue ball over. Somewhere behind the 3-7. Yeah, that looks awfully close to a double kiss though. with a little bit of English though just to change the angle off of the rail we'll soon know I don't know if he was actually trying to cut that ball in or if he was trying to shoot the one into the three and just caught it a little too thin. Yeah, I think you're probably right. But this has now looked like it's going to go hill hill. It's a real battle. Well, we called it at the beginning of the set. If the lag is anything like the, the match, it's going to be a close one. Or maybe the other way around, if the match is like the lag. Yeah, it's a poor shot he's played there, though. Yeah, not pleased with that, he is not. Does not pass the eight. Looking at a back cut. Yeah, cue ball's gonna hit right there if he goes for the back cut. Well, if he draws, if he puts a lot of draw on it, it will. Yeah, needs to catch it right still though. 
anywhere off of the potting angle and the cue ball could be going very close to that side pocket he's looking at coming round the back of the nine It all looked too tough. It said, no thanks, just play the safety. Yeah, I don't mind that. Good shot he's played there. Looking to play this with lots of left hand spin. Catch the two ball fin, take the cue ball back up towards the 7 3. He's got a two railer as well. That's what he's looking at now. Also looking at maybe clipping off it thin. Cubo over behind the 9-4 off two rails. That would be a nice shot if he could execute that. Yeah, if he can get the carom onto the four, he should be okay here. Keep your eyes on that cue ball. He wants that tracking towards the nine and the four. Wasn't far away from it. Good opportunity for Pius to go hill hill. the cue ball there finished way short looking at zigzagging back and forth two rails possibly three rails playing the sub the four to this bottom left corner oh and he's missed the three Once again, so much attention on the cue ball, forgot to pot the three, maybe took his eye off it. Your eye tends to go to where you want the cue ball to hit. If it goes just that little bit early, it can make you play across the cue ball. Finished nice on the four but forgot the most important part. he gives up playing <laughs> he could make a good ref he'd make a good ref he called that foul perfectly and he's quite adept and at cleaning that cue it. ball he called it perfectly and was good at explaining why Simple but effective little safety there from Jeffrey. Did he leave an edge? He's looking at kicking. Doing 
doing his measuring system. Pius is probably like, you know, I like playing on the Railbirds uh, TV table, but I always have to explain everything to them. I always have to point out everything to them because otherwise they have no idea what I'm doing. Well, I'll tell you what, he played that to absolute perfection. That was a brilliant shot. That exactly was. Exactly how he played it. And he even pointed it out to us ahead of time, so we know that's what he was playing. Nicely done. Yeah. No tap on the table from Jeffrey, but, well, Pierce, give yourself a tap on the leg for that one. That was a great shot. Here, you can uh, get a little tap on the microphone for me. And apologies to anyone wearing headphones. Jeffrey now second favourite for this. Messi cuts this in the side. Might even cut it in the side. Oh, he's missed it altogether. That excellent kick safety by Pius has earned him a ball in hand at this crucial stage of the match. Yeah, that was shot of the match, that was. It's going to earn him a chance to be breaking for the match. Anywhere over by that left hand long rail. Let's come back out. Had a lot more angle than it looked. What a turnaround. Yeah, this nine ball to make it hill hill. What a match this has been. It's had the lot, hasn't it? It's had a little bit of everything. Hill, hill. Let's look at that safety again. Let's have a look at this. Nice yeah, shot. Nicely having, done. You know, if you just see that part of the shot, then you might think, well, there's a little bit of luck involved. But as you pointed out, and as Pierce pointed out, <laughs> literally, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly what he played. I'm sure Jeffrey will be out of his chair to have a look at this rack again. I would expect nothing less. It's Hill Hill. If you're not going to expect a rack on Hill Hill, then <laughs> then you're never going to expect it, inspect it. I've never seen anyone get so close to the rack to look. You haven't seen me rack the balls then. I leave eyelashes on the ball when I check them. <laughs> you probably take your glasses off though when, you, when you're when you down that, that low. I do, yeah. I, t I actually lift my glasses up. Funny you should say that. When I, Even when I'm trying to see if a ball is frozen to the rail as well, I'll lift my glasses up and my eyeball is almost on the one ball or whatever ball it is. That's the one advantage to being nearsighted is uh, you can uh, take your glasses off and you can get a really close look at something and inspect it very closely. I used to be pretty nearsighted before I got LASIK. It was around negative uh, 4.5. Not as bad as yours, but still pretty bad. Yeah, I'm negative 5.25 now. 
and blind in one as well there you go mm -hmm. so while my distance vision is perfect now since the LASIK my uh, up close vision is has gone away so I traded one for the other well Jeffrey not having a look at the rack there here we go hill hill Oh, can he complete four out of four on this stream table? Oh, it's going to be dry, is it? Five ball, five ball. No. Oh, it's dry. And look at this. What look a at time to come up dry. Look at this layout. Half the balls are either hanging in the pockets or within six inches of a pocket. Wow. Well, this next shot is the one. One to the two, and it's not difficult. Three hanging over the side pocket. Four and five combo. And then all your work is back down this end of the table, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is a dream layout. And he's played this perfect. Come off Us the back rail, a little bit of right hand spin. Usually when a match is hill hill, usually the final game is never a break and run or anything close to it. It's usually Balls are all clustered up, tied up. It's a real battle for the final game. It's the final game in a hill hill match is rarely well, if he can. something like this. Yeah, and if he can break and run, well, it wasn't a break and run, was it? It was uh, Pierce's break, of course. But if he can run this rack, I think it'll be the first time he's done it in the whole match. Pierce has only done it once. Oh, did that four freeze to the rail? Or is it in the jaw of the pocket? No, I can't okay. tell. He's okay. He's okay. It's not frozen to the rail. It's on, it's in the jaw of the pocket, I think. Yeah, didn't oh, yeah. Double kissing, I think. No yeah. problem whatsoever. The heart will be beating fast now. And Pierce will be feeling a little deflated. Wondering if he'll get back to the table. I doubt it. I don't want to state the obvious, but, you know, this really was a match that anyone could have won. You could see it was going to be close. Jeffrey did open a two rack lead twice. Five, three and eight, six. Pierce won the next two to come level. And then broke dry in the final rack. And Jeffrey now with this nine ball to win the match he's going to go for clean in the queue I wonder if he'll clean the cue ball as well I was wondering that myself bit of a stretch Jeffrey DeLuna, 9-8. Wow, what a match that was. That had everything. That had drama. That had conflict. It had uh, uh, safety battles. It had some really nice kick safeties. It had everything. 
anyway, that was a great match. I am Kevin Ross, along with Mark White. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. We have plenty more matches coming up. See you guys on the next one.